So lung cancer is the second leading cause of death in this country, and now a major announcement could radically change how we fight against the disease. Joining us today to talk about it is Lori Fenton Ambrose. She's the CEO and president of the Lung Cancer Alliance, and Dr. Bill Mayfield. He's a leading thoracic surgeon in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So first, can you tell me about these new recommended guidelines? I mean, this is a really big deal. It sure is, and to put that in context, we now can do what we have done for other cancers, other diseases, to find and treat and cure at early stages for lung cancer. These recommendations are validating that low-dose CT can be life-saving for an at-risk group and that we should be moving forward rapidly on coverage and reimbursement. So what kind of impact will these guidelines make in fighting this terrible disease and maybe getting a head start on it? Well, the research has demonstrated a 20% reduction in lung cancer mortality in the high-risk group that was studied. So that's the largest reduction we've seen in any of the lung cancers in a screening trial. That studied a very limited population of patients, and we think that the reductions will be even higher uh, over time. Yeah, that's really exciting news. Um, what groups are most at risk for getting lung cancer? So the highest risk group has been defined as 55 years of age to 79 years of age, having smoked 30 years a pack a day. Uh, some of the professional organizations are widening those guidelines to include patients who uh, are 50 years of age or older, smoked about 20 years a pack a day, and have some other risk factor, which would include some environmental exposure, uh, family history, uh, or um, COPD. So what about um, like secondhand smoke and people that were around a heavy smoker for many years? Well, there, are, uh, there is a growing body of evidence that secondhand smoke is actually quite toxic and leads to increased risk of lung cancer and other lung diseases. Those patients are not included in this screening trial, but that's, this gives us the ability to start doing research in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, how many people die each year from lung cancer? Um, it's more than I think any of us realize. That's right. Um, sadly, uh, most people don't appreciate that lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death. It claims more lives than breast, prostate, colon, liver, kidney, pancreas, and melanoma cancers combined. It's about 160,000 people a year. And to be able to put in context what this announcement means, we can almost cut that in half if we move to implement screening uh, in the most responsible way right, right now. What, um, when is lung cancer usually detected, and is it currently almost too late once that's detected? Will this you know, help prevent? Sure. So the state of the art today is that about 80% of patients who present to their doctor with lung cancer present at a late stage because lung cancer grows silently until you know it's there. And once you know it's there at stage three or stage four, it's very difficult to treat and to cure. Uh, lung cancer screening in many programs has allowed us to detect lung cancers, 80% of lung cancers, in stage one and stage two, when it is curable and or very treatable. It's much less expensive and much uh, less harmful to treat patients in early stage disease. Um, what is a excuse me? What is a screening process like? What, is, what does a patient go through? So the patient goes through a low-dose CT. So a CT scanner is like a, a big x-ray machine. The scan itself takes about 30 seconds, and it uses a very small amount of radiation, about a millisievert, which is equivalent to half of a mammogram. And we're dialing that radiation dose down all the time. So the screen is more a process in that we're recommending annual CT scans to examine the lungs and look for any changes over time. So is it true that eventually Medicaid and Medicare um, and even other insurers might eventually cover these screenings? The good news is with this announcement, what we will see is an acceleration to cover and reimburse this. The good news is that we already have seen some commercial payers move forward even in advance of this announcement because they knew it was the right thing. 
please understand that this evidence is overwhelmingly supportive of doing this. And the focus now is moving rapidly to get the payers and even the government covering it, but also informing those who are at risk and making sure it's done responsibly. And we're proud to have worked with doctors in a multidisciplinary setting to set up exactly those uh, criteria through a lung screening framework of excellence. So it is being done well and right, right now, and we shouldn't be waiting. Know if you're at risk, and then go to those doctors who can help uh, save your life. Absolutely. The Lung Cancer Alliance has been fighting for a long time for, uh, you know, to get the message out there and try and make this happen. You guys must be really excited. Uh, to say that we are, are uh, honored and uh, profoundly uh, excited is an understatement. Uh, this is something that we have long believed in and have been seeking for, for a community that has deserved so much more. Uh, no one deserves to die from lung cancer, no one. And this announcement ushers in literally a new day in which we can think and hope. Uh, for life-saving um, outcomes that never seemed possible until now. Um, and doctor, you're kind of a known as a pioneer in this uh, in this field and trying to get um, screenings, you know, to be more accessible. You must be really excited about this as well. I, I am. This validates what we've been doing for about six years uh, in a number of centers around the country, and we waited for a long time for this uh, study to appear and uh, it really does endorse uh, what we've been doing. We uh, believe that there are risks to anything. The risks of this have been minimized when you perform lung cancer screening in a continuum of care with a team of doctors who are experienced in uh, managing these abnormalities. Excellent. Um, where can people go to get screenings, um, to find out where to go uh, to get screenings and, and get more information? Uh, the most important thing that people should be doing right now is learning if they could be at risk and where to go to have it done well and right. At riskforlungcancer.org is a website set up to help navigate these questions and direct to responsible care at riskforlungcancer.org, and certainly all of us at Lung Cancer Alliance stand at the ready to be as helpful and as supportive as possible. This is game changing. Excellent. Thank you both for joining us today and uh, for being advocates uh, to help people fight this disease. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much.